Hey, posing gloves here. I am wearing a hat, and today we are going to be going over dun, 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 Monarch. We're going to be going over the control section and also the keyboard section. So envelope, re-triggering, note priority, global behavior of Monarch, which can be very important. I'm also going to tell you something about the octave knob that you may or may not have been aware of. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but at the same time, it's having it pointed out to you could be useful later on when you're doing sound design. So here we have our tuning. We're just going to start with the tuning. Then we're going to go into this back panel for keyboard. Then we're going to go into glide, back panel for glide ramp. And then we're going to go into the pitch band and modulation, which are really simple. So we won't have a problem there. We've already talked about modulation and we'll talk more about it as we get into other tabs, other where, other places. So we have tuning. This allows us to tune Monarch up and down by octaves. So if I play a note, and right now I'm playing a very low note. Let's go ahead and go to the initialized presets. So we're all on the same page. Here's the note. So you see we are changing by octaves. We're moving up and down in that range. And that's really cool. This allows us, if we have two things that are, say, an octave apart, we can change the range of the whole instrument out in one go. This is also similar to just writing in a different space on the piano roll. And that, or a different octave on the piano roll, which could be another reason you do this. Maybe you want to write in the same range as your other sounds, but have like a lower octave sound. That way you can use ghost notes and other helpers to just help you compose a little bit quicker. So a little less mental stress on that and you can focus on other aspects of your track. The Another cool function of the octave knob is let's say we want to use the LFO here for the oscillator one. We could go, well, that's not, well, hold up a second. Here we go. There we go. I was like, that was really high for an LFO. Now we're gonna, so that's pretty slow, but let's say it's not slow enough, we want slower, slower. So we can go down an octave and even another one. So you have some options here for the octave knob for technical reasons as well. So, okay, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna switch it back up to, to uh, 16. And let's look at the fine control. So fine control allows you to tune the tune Monarch as a whole instrument, so ever, all three oscillators at the same time, up and down, semi se seven semitones. So if you're doing something that maybe augmented the pitch of Monarch, you can fix it using the fine control, or you can use the fine control, maybe you're doing some weird thing that relies on ratios of pitch. Maybe you're doing some sort of frequency modulation where the fine knob may play more of a role in your synthesis. It just completely depends. Usually I don't end up touching this knob all that often, but those are some some reasons that I may grab it. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. That's tuning, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to understand. Let's go over to B and look at keyboard. We have this legato. So Monarch is monophonic, so it can only play one note. So this means that whenever you hit one note, and you let go of it and hit another note, Monarch's cool with you. You guys are friends, you hang out on Tuesdays and eat spicy tuna rolls, like it's really great. But let's say that, hey, one day you decide to hold down the note and then you push another note before letting go of the first one. Now Monarch is not cool. It's having a breakdown. It's not sure how much to tip the waiter. It's freaking out. And that's because it has to be told what note to play. Your first note or the second note you played. Like, which one Which one do I play? And that's what the priority setting decides in the keyboard section. So we have a last, a low, and a high setting. The last setting says, whatever the last note I played was, play that note. So if you hit a note and then you hit a new note, play that one. So that's last priority, pretty simple. So for example, if I just play a couple notes. So it's always gonna play the last note I played. Now, if I go to high, always it will play the highest note. So if I play a high note, if I, I will only play a new note if I play a note higher than that note. So I'm, I'm hitting notes that are lower than that note, but they do not trigger because it's been told only play the high notes and then vice versa, the low notes. So if I play a low note, it will not play any notes higher than it, but it will play a note lower than it. So I'm gonna play a C, then I'm going to try and play a D above it. It won't work. And then I'm going to play a G below it and it will work. So here's the C. My bad. I hit an F, but then I slid up to a G. But because I let go of the F, the G was allowed to play. So that's how that works. Our next setting is the envelope re-trigger. So that's priority. It decides when is a new note happening. Priority always gets evaluated first. So I almost always leave it on last. That's by far the most intuitive. In fact, I can't even think of a scenario where I lose, where I used low versus high. Maybe I'm doing some experimental thing with a 
note generator or something, then that might become more important. So, okay, let's do envelope retrigger next. So we have this envelope retrigger. So we've decided we have a new note. The question now is, does that new note get a new envelope? So I'm assuming you know stuff about envelopes from Sound and Synth Basics. So we go into here, filter envelopes. This is very easy to see with a pluck envelope. So I'm gonna set a very fast attack in a moderate decay, well, a short decay, but not too short. And we're gonna do a sustain of zero, right? So it's a pluck sound. Pretty cool. I'm gonna go up an octave. Cool. Now let's go ahead and see here. So it says, oh yeah, you're playing new notes. So I, I trigger those notes. I play those notes. Cool. But what about the envelope? So and never, it will say, oh, you hit a note. And then even if I have new notes, they do not get new envelopes. They, they get the envelope of the first one. So if it's going through its decay cycle, those ones will simply come in on the decay cycle. If I play it, you see they just fade away. That could be important for what you're doing, maybe the way you wrote, maybe that just is something that really grooves. But most of the time, I'm assuming you're not gonna want that. You're gonna want it each new note to get a new envelope. So we'll go note on. And so this says, whenever a note, a new note has been said, this is a new note, it will get a new envelope. So pretty cool. Now it makes sense. Every note sounds clearly, whereas before only the first note. Now, of course, this is only when you have hit two notes and you're not, because if you hit a new note, like, or even on, on never as well, because remember Monarch's monophonic has no problem with one note. Uh, now the last one is no on off. I don't, I don't use this one really, but basically when you hit a new note, it will trigger a new envelope. And when you release the note, it will also release the envelope. I'll, I'll come in here and maybe screw with this just as an, as an experiment, but I don't normally come in here deliberately for this particular control. But when you let go of a note, it will also trigger a new envelope. Now on the section of envelopes, Monarch has a, a particular configuration on how it deals with envelopes that have, so whenever you give one note, it will just start a new envelope, right? We've already figured that out, no problem. But uh, when you have an envelope that hasn't finished before the next note is triggered, especially when you have one of those guy deals. So when you have that, what happens to the, does it get a new envelope at a new value? Does it turn off the first envelope or does it stack the envelopes, right? So let me show you with a filter. So we're gonna go note on and last. So every time we hit a new note, we'll get a new envelope. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the filter down to half and put a five second rise on the attack and that's it. So it's gonna take five seconds for this uh, attack to, to reach on. So it's gonna take five seconds for this filter to turn on, right? That's, we'll talk about this relationship later and I'm gonna turn the contour on. Okay, so now if I hold down one note, we get this and let's turn on our sustain so that it goes through. So you hear that it takes time for the filter to turn on. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the sustain away because it's easier to hear with pluck sounds. And what we're gonna do is on our notes on. So now what happens is Monarch's been said whenever a new note is, it's gonna stack our envelopes up. So the next note is gonna get a new envelope, but it's not gonna be a new envelope at an initial value. It's gonna be a new envelope at the value of the last note. So for example, watch, as I play, I hit one note, I hit another note. It starts the envelope all over. But let's say that the notes are, are hitting faster than the envelopes can finish. Well, they'll begin to stack up. And so you hear the filter turn on. And that is really intuitive, that's really cool. That's what I was talking about in previous videos is that behavior. So that is something you just need to be aware of. That is a configuration of how Monarch deals with envelopes. So if they have long decay times, they will stack. If they, if they don't finish their envelope. So that's kind of some sort of an important note. And that is this section. So you've got a handle on this now. Good job. We've got this. Now let's move over to the glide time. So you have two glide times. One is MM and one is silver. And the thing about glide is because it's monophonic and it can only ever play one note. So it's got to be told a couple things. It's got to be told... Well, it's gotta be told this. If you hit play two notes and it says, oh, okay, play the next note. The question is now, do I slide to the next note? 
how fast do I slide or do I not slide? Like if the answer is no, then I just appear there. So the question that's the question, right? So we have this time control, which determines how fast the slide happens. Cool. So that makes sense. But then we have these two modes over here, MM and silver. MM is a, it's, it looks at the interval and says, oh, these two notes are far apart. So my time, it takes its time. And then it also looks at how far the notes are apart. So if they're far apart, it'll take longer to get to that next note versus silver doesn't care. Silver says, I don't care how far the notes are apart. It will always take a consistent amount of time to get to that note. So let's look at MM first. And I'm going to make this kind of long because it's much easier to hear. So if I play a low note and then let's turn on our sustain so we can and let's turn our filter off this off and that off. Okay, cool. So and now I'll slide up to the next note. You notice how long that takes. And we'll slide back down. Now let's go to silver and see how long this takes. Much, much faster. It cares not at all how long it takes. Now, if we go to two notes in the middle, you see that it slides quite quickly and so will MM. Because the difference, the notes are very close together. So it says, oh, they're close together. So we'll slide at the rate that this has been set at or much closer to that rate. So that's what these guys determine. So we have three controls next. We have always legato and off, and this has to do with how it interprets you playing the keyboard or writing notes. So always says, when it's sliding to the new notes, does it always slide to that note? Meaning, for check it out. So I'm gonna play a C, I'm gonna play the C above it. And you hear how it's still sliding? Like it didn't play that next C on the dot. It was sliding there. And that can be a very undesirable behavior in some cases. Right? Maybe you want to have it go do, 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 do. And that's what legato is for. It will only slide when the notes are overlapping. But if we overlap it, that's what legato means versus always. It's going to be constantly sliding. It never quite settles on the pitch. That could be a very desirable effect for other times, but not in this case. Maybe you're playing a really tight solo and you have a very fast glide time. So always works just fine. Legato, though, is the one you probably expect to happen. And our last one is off. So you see, there's, there is no glide. There's zero glide. Okay, so that is the glide setting. Let's go ahead and look in panel B at the glide ramp. So we have two modes. We have free one and we have gated. And this has to do, again, with the envelopes that are going on here. So let's say that we have a sound. and I'm going to activate the release envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the release, turn up the decay time. So we have this decay time. Right now, it's equivalent to the decay. So if I play a note, you hear that we have a decay of about 600 milliseconds. And right now, we have a glide ramp, and we have these two modes, gated and free run. And this, this is the question. Let's say I'm in mid-slide to the next note. Do I, do I freeze at the pitch when you let go? So let's say I only get halfway, and then I let go of the note. Does the note continue to just play that pitch I let go at or does it continue to slide to that note as if I had held down the note but it just plays through the envelope so when I let go of the note do I just continue on my way as long as I'm sounding like what do I do that's what Monarch wants to know that's what these do so in gated it will freeze at the pitch so we're sliding up let's go ahead and configure that and now we'll play it and we'll stop when I let go so let's make this pretty long and as the decay time rings out it's going to freeze when I let go of the note whoops that was new so you see how it no versus no it didn't continue to go see how it stopped at that that pitch if we do my audio engine glitched so now let's go to free run it will continue to slide regardless of me letting go of the note as long as the sound is sounding see how it keeps going so that may be a very desirable, important behavior for you to keep track of. Check it out back here. So that is the keyboard section here, and that is the glide section here. Our last section is the modulation. We've already looked at this a little bit, but pitch bend will simply, I'm going to turn it on to legato and leave it on silver and turn the glide time to something a lot more reasonable for what I want to do. And I'm also going to turn off the release. Okay, cool. Now the pitch bend will simply bend the pitch. 
And then I don't remember exactly where this comes in on the signal chain, but you can go check it out on the block diagrams again if you want to go find out exactly when, if maybe you're doing something very specific. And then we also have our pitch bend wheel here. And as we turn it up, of course, we can set it to oscillator three or noise. We've already talked about this. We can have red noise or pink noise for modulation and our oscillator three can be configured and we can use it to oscillate the frequency of oscillators one and two. There's that. And then also we can set it to modulate the cutoff frequency of the filter envelope. So anyways, that is the modulation. And so if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe, support me on Patreon so I can continue to do these things and have a blessed day.